All right. Hello. Alexis. <laughs> What's going on, Drew? We learn something new every week about we each do. other. Yeah. And you are surprised that I was a substitute teacher for a Yes. Bit. Yeah. What surprises you about that? You know, I just feel like Uh huh. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm I'm I I am surprised you lasted a year. That you liked it a year. Wait, hold on. Scratch that. What does I'm that mean? What does that mean? <laughs> Lasted a year. I'm surprised. I did it one day a week is all I did it. Okay. And uh, I was like jet lagged because I worked <laughs> I worked at night there in Tuesday through Friday. And then Mondays I switched to the mornings. Mondays are already the worst day of the week. Yeah. And then to be a sub. Yeah. And then I was for junior it. high kids. <laughs> so you can imagine how that went. <laughs> I'm sure they loved it. Uh, Did you yeah, like roll in know. the, the TV? You know, like, hey sometimes, guys, we're going to watch. Okay. Sometimes. That would sometimes. be a great Monday. In my I never opinion. followed the lesson plan. <laughs> Teachers everywhere are cringing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's why I didn't do it very long. <laughs> my first day being a substitute teacher was kindergarten. Because oh, wow. I was like, ooh, this is I did fine. some younger ages too. Okay. Yeah. That, that was, was really not it my was thing. Awful. Yeah. That was not my thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's. Uh, we, the reason why subbing came up, because our guest yes. today is Katie Comer. Yes. And uh, Katie and I uh, met in a store in Michigan. We were out touring stores in Michigan. She and I met. And um, uh, she is a facilitator mm-hmm. in our academy there. And our academies teach uh, teach the surrounding stores. And she had just this great personality. She brought yeah. a lot of energy, very passionate about what she did. And I thought you'd be great uh, for the podcast. So mm-hmm. today's really around uh, teaching and developing others, uh, but it's also just the power of having a passion, uh, putting that to work, being willing to try different things, mm-hmm. and growing uh, your career. And she was one of many people that have come on here and said, I started as a job. <laughs> Just yes. a job, and it's turned into this great career. That's right. Uh, and so it's another great story. Yeah, I mean, she could be a spokesperson for literally everything training and development. I know. Yeah, yeah absolutely. She was great. Good deal. All right, everybody, listen up. Katie Comer. Oh, listen, did you say? I did say hey, listen. Hey, let's listen on up. <laughs> Katie, welcome. Hi. Welcome to The Difference, and it's so good to see you. I was in your mm-hmm. store how long, how long? How many weeks ago was that? Four or five weeks ago? Yeah, something like that. And uh, we met and uh, posted your a picture of you and I in um, in the store in the academy, and uh, started thinking through that it'd be fun to have you. Have a great story, so we'll get into your story here in just a bit. Uh, but thank you for your time. We know you're incredibly busy, and uh, we will dig into uh, all that kind of stuff here in a minute. But um, Alexis, I'm assuming you were busy all weekend because this was opening uh, weekend for football for the NFL. I was. Were you so all into busy. it? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Made a lot of food products. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. What were the What were your favorite games you watched? The the one game uh-huh. with the players. Good. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. <laughs> if you had to name three teams off the top of your head, three <laughs> NFL teams, I want to hear them right now. Three teams. Three. Wait, NFL. NFL teams. Okay, Cowboys. Ah, here we go. Hey, come okay. on. Okay. Um. What comes to your mind? Is 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 are the Raiders one? Yep. There okay. You go. All right. Uh-huh. So there's two. Yep. <clears throat> Katie, what's another one? What's another one? Uh, the the Lions. How about that one? There you the go. The Lions. Yeah. All you got to say is animal name. Animal, animal. types. <laughs> Tigers? Yeah. Bears? Uh, yeah, bears? Like okay. See? Okay. Oh, my. This is good stuff. <laughs> well, good. I know. I was thinking about you this week and thought, man, I, I know this is really, she's really into sports. Just glued to the TV. And you were just glued to the TV I watching. I was. Yeah. Yeah. NFL. NFL. National. Katie, do you watch uh, football at all? Are you into football? Um, Just a little bit sporadically. So not too much. Um, I mean, I did grow up in a, a household that was very much into sports, but... Um, I didn't really fall fall onto that hey, side of the fence. There you go, with kindred them. spirits. Fantastic. Kindred spirits. Yeah, this is great. What do you do outside of work? <laughs> what's your What's your interest? If it's not sports, what else do you have? Um, well, I I do a little bit of I don't know everything, or maybe not much of anything. <laughs> um, I am in school right now through our Live Better You program, so I put a lot of focus towards that. There you go. Um, I have the world's most adorable little Yorkies named Mickey and Minnie. Um, and they are as cute as their names. There you go. <laughs> um, so we spend a lot of time outside and, uh, I go kayaking. Um, 
I like the arts. So I do some drawing, I do painting, and I also like to write a little bit. Oh, man. You guys are like oh, twins. Oh, this is great. Yeah. This is great. Yeah. No, I have a fun kayaking story. It really is super short. I tried to get into it and then immediately rolled and then couldn't <laughs> get back into it. So so you were, were you trapped upside down? I No, it just like flipped me right out. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, at least I, you weren't like un, upside down. Because sometimes you can get stuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was bad. You should I'm, try I'm hoping... the, the sit on top. Yeah, I I sadly did. <laughs> <laughs> so hopefully, Katie, you are uh, way way better at that than I am. Katie, I want to get into. Uh, I want to get into. <laughs> He's li- like, let's change the subject. Yeah, there we go. Uh, <laughs> Katie, I want to get into uh, live better you in just a second because that's that's awesome, and I know sure. you're you're looking forward to your graduation, and it's a it's a great way for you to further your your education. Um, but before we do that, tell a little bit. Of, uh, about your story at Walmart. How long have you been uh, with Walmart and uh, what are some of the things that you've done or even before Walmart? Mm. Sure. Um, well, I, I, I know I've had jobs before Walmart, but they don't really stick out to me that much um, because I, I love what I do now. Um, so I've had some jobs along the way, but um, when I came to Walmart, probably like a lot of folks, I thought maybe I would just work here until I found something better. Um, so I was hired in as a temporary associate, um, for a remodel Hmm. and they had me, you know, building side counters, um, waxing the new floors, you know, a lot of different jobs to put a store together. And, um, our store manager had told us during the orientation that, you know, there's a few positions that'll be available after the remodel. Um, so pretty much you just have to work really hard, come to work and show us that you want it. And I'm like, I can do that. I'm a hard worker. Um, so after the remodel, I was hired in to our automotive department and um, I was a service writer greeter. So that was pretty cool. Um, after that, I was um, promoted to the old IMS supervisor position. <laughs> um, so anybody out there that doesn't know what that is, it's our inventory management system many, many moons ago. And um, I had a great store manager. His name is Terry Lance. I'll just give him a little shout out. Yeah, nice. He's out in Utah. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> he uh, really gave me a lot of confidence. Um, I wasn't sure, but he was like, you'll be great. Um, don't worry, you can do it. And he was very supportive, um, actually throughout quite a bit of my career. Uh, so yeah, I was an hourly supervisor for a few years and then I became an assistant manager by 2012. So just under four years and I became an assistant. And I did that for about four years before I came to the academy as a mm. facilitator. That's so, awesome. Wow. How many people wow. have come on here and said, yep. I came for a job mm-hmm. and I found a career? Like, so many. So many. Yeah. Like we could just do a loop of <laughs> everybody saying, <laughs> yep. I came in for just a job, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When did it switch for you? Like when did you come to the realization like, man, I can make a yeah. You know, I could make a career out of this. I think I I think when I became an assistant manager mm. is when it really hit me. Um, I was nervous. I, I didn't think that I, I knew enough to be an assistant manager. But again, um, my store manager, um, he told me, he was like, you're going to be great. And every job that you ever have, you'll feel like you don't know enough. And that's the point. You go in and you learn and you apply it. So once I became an assistant manager, I just, I don't know, I, I've been in love with the company since I've been here and I just knew that I could really further my career and this is where I wanted to be. And, um, coming to the Academy pushed me even harder because I, I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do, but once I got into the academy and realized that there is like this whole other world out there, mm. um, and I really wanted to focus on the people side of the business. So then when the Live Better You program came along, it took me a little bit to get started because, again, I wasn't sure if I could do it. Um, but now I just think there's so many doors open for me. I, I don't know that I can ever stop. There you go. Good oh, for wow. you. That's so Thank cool. So yeah. For those wow. that don't know, we have about 200 academies mm-hmm. um, across the country and those 200 academies train the other stores. Uh, so people come to the academies and train and then we have dedicated 
uh, associates that are there to um, uh, be facilitators and, and go through the content. So Katie's one of those those facilitators. What what drew you to to be a uh, a teacher uh, essentially to be a facilitator? Yeah, um, I was a little bit nervous. I'll be honest because it was a, a new program, and I was like, "Ooh, I don't know." I hadn't even thought about it, but I had gotten a call that. Um, some folks that had worked with me previously, they were like, you would be perfect for this. Um, so I, I really liked the concept, but I didn't know that much yet. And I wasn't sure what it was even really going to be about. But I was like, you know what? I'll try it. Um, there's always a position available at Walmart, no matter where you go. So if this one doesn't work out, <laughs> I'll find something. <laughs> so I... Um, I thought I would just try it and and see what happened. I loved the concept of teaching and training and mm. developing others. So I was really drawn to that piece. That's awesome. That's so cool. Wow. You know, teaching and training, that's that's a hard thing to do. Mm. Not everyone is is I I don't want to say capable because everyone's capable, but it sometimes it comes more naturally to others mm. and others have to really work for it. Um and so for you, Katie, how did you kind of come into that role it feels like a lot of individuals who have found themselves in that development space um, prior to mm -hmm. joining Walmart they've had experiences where that's like hit home to them in that development side to it yeah, sure so for you and your story you know when did development really hit home to you even joining before joining Walmart um, so positions that I've had um, before Walmart uh, were supervisor roles. So I did a lot of teaching and training. Um, I would have new hires come in um, for various jobs. So I would teach and train. And I, I always liked that. I always liked um, getting to see people, you know, hit those milestones or those accomplishments Ooh, when yeah. they learn. Yeah. It, for me, it's like, I don't know if it's considered selfish, but it's a feel good for me. <laughs> To know Absolutely. that, you know, that maybe I had a part of somebody's success, like that makes me feel good to, to see people do well for themselves. And even in Walmart, always big about teaching and training. And I think just from a leadership role is if you want your teams to be successful, you have to teach and train everything that you know, ask questions, even if you think you know, um, and pass on the information. And that's what makes people strong. But I would definitely say getting to see people be successful. So um, I think it really hit home for me about a year in the academy because I had seen people come through as a first time hourly associate. And then a year later, they're coming back as an assistant manager. Mm, and it's cool. just like, woo, you know, round of applause. <laughs> and it's so exciting that to, you know, people's lives are changing. Yeah. And it's just mm. such a, a feel good for me. So I, I think it's that it's getting to see people progress and, and be more successful. Yeah, we're sometimes sometimes we're we're in the people business more than we are anything else, um, mm -hmm. and not just from a training perspective, but all of us in um, in the company, one way or the other, whether it's customers or it's our associates, mm -hmm. um, we're really about serving others and uh, seeing them seeing them do better, which is great. Do, do you miss teaching? I do. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. So Katie, I know you and I have had um, conversations prior to this call. Um, and so yeah. being a, a prior um, educator, there are definitely moments where I'm like, man, I miss that. Mm -hmm. I miss being in front of, uh, you know, my peers or even my kids uh, back in the day and kind mm -hmm. of teaching them something new. And that light bulb moment that goes off and you're like, mm -hmm. oh, my gosh. How many years did you teach? Um, I taught for about four and a half, five years. Mm. Um, so I was pretty new to it. Yeah. Um, I did a lot of substitute teaching, yeah. which was always fun. Um, I, if you can imagine, <clears throat> I substitute <laughs> taught. No, you didn't. Yes, I did. What? Yes. You can imagine those kids were thrilled to have me. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What what grades? <laughs> it was like junior high. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. That was my favorite. It was like as a second job. Yeah. I did it on, uh, I worked, I had Mondays off. And so uh, when I, so Mondays off, since I had Mondays off, that's the day I subbed. Wow. Yeah. What? I have yeah. so many questions. Yeah. Why would you choose to sub? Uh, I mean, that came out very yeah, poorly, first yeah. of all. I'm glad you, I'm glad you. <laughs> I'm glad you could see my potential as a teacher. <laughs> no, it's a hard job. So any people that are out there substitute teaching, yes. I feel for you. That is a tough job, but it can be very rewarding. And so, junior high? Junior wow. high. <laughs> wow. 
Did you also prepare by having an energy drink before class? <laughs> no, this this is before Asking my for a friend. This Touche. Is, yeah, yeah, well said. The uh, this was before my energy drink. Wow. Times. Oh my gosh, what did you get out of it? Like, what did you enjoy? Well, I needed you... a little bit of money. <laughs> that was part of the reasons I did it. Um, <laughs> but uh, also just a cool experience. And I and I I do I get what you're saying around. Uh, it's fun to pour into others. Yeah. And. Um, you know, had, had, and I have a ton of respect for, for teachers, uh, in general, um, when that is your, uh, that's your passion and mm-hmm. what you do each and every day. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had, I had people that, um, like I had college professors that made a huge difference in my life. Uh, and so I kind of had that in my mind and, uh, so yeah, I did it. Wow. Yeah. That's today. I, I haven't thought about that in a while. That's wow. That's really cool. Yeah. Katie, have you, do you think you would ever substitute? Um, I think I would. And in high school, I did some student teaching and yes. I absolutely loved it. And uh, yeah, junior high, uh, mm. definitely. <laughs> Look at us. Definitely. Yeah, definitely a, a challenge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, yes, you know. they, they are very challenging. And it's funny. I now have, uh, well, I have one that's in high school, but another one's in junior high. Kids. Yeah. So maybe it prepared me to be uh, there you a go. dad. I don't know. Yeah. And maybe in another life, the three of us could, you know, be teachers together. <laughs> right. I right. was like, nope. <laughs> I couldn't do it now. I just, I couldn't do it. Uh, yeah. That's so cool. I had no idea. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Very interesting. Um, so Katie, uh, mm-hmm. let's talk about this. Live better. You, how far along are you? Yes. So I am in my second year and I did the first program, the college um, prep, the college start, which is all of the prerequisite classes that you need for all of your other classes, um, which was really good for me because I wasn't, again, entirely sure which direction I wanted to go. I had an idea and I wasn't sure about school because it's been a little bit since I've been in a class. So um, it, it gave me a good idea. And then the coaches are fantastic that they set you up with. Um, you can ask all sorts of questions. And, you know, they ask you like, hey, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I really like business management and I really like HR and I don't know which one to pick. And they were like, hey, guess what? We have one that does both. And I'm like, that's the one. So um, so now I'm taking, yeah, now I'm taking classes through Southern New Hampshire University and it's, it's awesome. I absolutely love it. It's so good. That's good. And so you're graduating. When's your, uh, your planned graduation date? It's going to be in 2024. 2024. That's what I thought. Okay. Yep. Well, good. That's great. Well, it's, it's a pretty cool benefit that we offer. Yeah. And we just came out and said that it's going to be 100% uh, funded now. So um, yes. we hope more and more associates take advantage of it. Uh, and people just like you that want to learn and mm-hmm. continue to grow and uh, may even think about changing up their career some. Uh, this, mm-hmm. this is a great, uh, great avenue. Because I don't know if you felt like this, Katie, but even when I was teaching, there were moments where I would look at content that I was given or that I had to teach and started thinking about it in a very different way, especially once mm-hmm. I got to know who my who my students were and how they learned and how they, mm-hmm. you know, retained information. Yeah. And so what I, grades did you teach again? I taught fourth and fifth grade. Fourth and fifth, that's mm-hmm. what I thought. Okay. And then I did a little bit of dabbling in seventh through ninth. Mm. Mm, those were those were good times. <laughs> I enjoyed those. I, bet you did. <laughs> I did. They were yeah. very sarcastic and so was I. So yeah. it was a good fit. <laughs> <laughs> but it started, you know, it started making me think I'm, you know, here are people who are kind of developing curriculum. They're, they're doing these things and I enjoy that as well, but I'm going to maybe put like a different spin on it and see if it hits better, or I'm going to give feedback or I'm going to do these things. Have you found yourself um, in situations like that as well, being in the academy? And then also, are you able to kind of give that feedback to then make classes and students and, and make that content a bit more of an experience for them. Yeah, so um, I I definitely love, um, you know, there's a level of flexibility that we get within the content because, you know, the content guides you through 
um, what you need to talk about and cover. And um, they do a fantastic job of even putting in some talking points. So maybe if, uh, you know, your class isn't quite as talkative yet, it gives you some extra um, questions and things that you can cover. Mm. And what I found is obviously you, you need to know your audience. And like you said, um, you know, seeing what your class needs from you. And um, I love that you call out feedback because we talk about that culture of feedback. And I try to implement that in class right away. Um, that way people do feel comfortable with, um, you know, what we're learning and to be able to talk and, and, you know, go through their thoughts of why they see something the way that they do. And, you know, another part of being a facilitator is to truly listen to what people are telling you. Mm -hmm. And um, as you see folks coming through, sometimes you start hearing the same thoughts or the same concerns. So then that lets me know that when I get into certain areas of content, I need to spend more time here because this might be a miss that we're, we're not quite hitting in the stores. So let's spend a little bit more time digging in here and covering those topics. Mm. Um, so it's really just about listening and, and see what they need from you. When you when you brought up the last part there, where truly listening um, to to the people that are in your class, listening to those around you, even your peers that are also facilitating, um, I, I wonder how has that kind of changed like when you work in a store and you're working with associates and being able to give them that feedback and having that flexibility since you do it all the time as a facilitator. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely when I get time to be out in the, um, not just my store, sometimes I get to go to other stores as well. Um, so it's always critical that we give good feedback along with the, the critical feedback, right? So um, you know, you have to establish those relationships and talk to people um, to get to know what they need from you. So mm -hmm. being able to apply the feedback in the stores, that's ultimately we give feedback because we want people to be better. And um, it's creating that relationship and creating that atmosphere so people know where you're coming from and that you're sharing feedback with them because you want to see them do better. You want to see them be successful. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I feel like you bring up listening <clears throat> a lot, and, you, and then you look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Am I just reading into I, that? Or? I think you are. Okay. I think you're just, yeah, I don't think there's anything there. Okay, because yeah. it's like every other podcast. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> well, would you look we at We did that? not pre plan that, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Katie, Katie she, you she uh, gave me a list. She's like, something I need you to cover. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. Like, she's. <laughs> She's like writing my eval for me. I oh guess. my I gosh. Know. No, that's really funny. Um, <laughs> Katie, you are, uh, you said you're interested in the people side of the business. Mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. what interests you? Is that like the next step for you? Is that what you're thinking or what interests you in the people side? Yeah, I, I'm always open because I just feel like there's so many different avenues to go down. Um, I'm very much interested in the people operations lead. Um, I, I love the thought of being able to help bridge that gap between the operation side of what's happening in the stores along with our people side. Um, I think that as a company, we're um, making tremendous steps in that direction. So I'd like to be a part of that. Um, and then also, uh, I, I think about talent and development and even recruiting. Uh, I feel mm. like I'm just really excited about getting people to work <laughs> at Walmart. So, <laughs> That's fantastic. so I, I think, yeah, so I'm somewhere, somewhere in that somewhere bubble. Somewhere in that space, right? Good yeah. Story. That's great. <laughs> Well, there is a lot of opportunity, and uh, your career can take you just about anywhere, mm -hmm. uh, which we've been talking about. You know, I would like to go back to Live Better You. So when you have, because you're currently going through it right now, you're coaching, you're at the academy, you're doing a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. you have two Yorkies. How do you, like, how do you balance all of that? How do you kind of maintain your well-being through all of it? It's uh, really one of the classes that I took was strategic planning and there was an exercise that they had us do oh, and you, yeah, you literally had to list out everything in your day from the moment that you woke up, you know, how long do you drink a cup of coffee? You know, how long does it take you to do your hair? And yeah, it, it was a pretty in-depth assignment that they gave us and you go through your entire wow. day. 
Um, because at first, like, you know, it's like, how much um, time do you think that you're going to spend on school? And a lot of times people have these ideas in mind that, oh, well, I'm going to dedicate two hours every night. And then when you start looking at your schedule, um, you have your daily routines, but then anything additional that comes up, um, you may not have that in your, your routine or your schedule. So now you might take away from your schooling. So it was really beneficial to um, strategically plan what my days look mm-hmm. like so I can balance my times out. And, you know, there is times where I have more going on on one day. So I know that I need to shift my routine to make sure I accomplish everything um, that I need to. And another thing I have found that is really beneficial Um, you know, meditation and you don't have Mm. to sit on the floor to do meditation, but it's, you know, it's any, anything that you do to give yourself that time to decompress your mind a little bit before you start a task. The other thing that's, uh, you, you bring up, you know, mapping out your day. Mm -hmm. Uh, like I say, I'll bring out your schedule and show us what your day looks like. No, but, but I, you know, you say you don't have, I don't have time for that. Right. Right. And then. Mm -hmm. If you have a Apple device, you get sc- your screen time report on Sundays. Have you ever got, looked at that? Do you get that? No. Where it tells you I how much time, don't want how much it. time you spend on the phone and what apps you look at. It's just TikTok. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden you're depressed because you're like, okay, <laughs> I did have time. <laughs> I had all I, the time. I had a lot of time. <laughs> and it, yeah, and that does too, because it, it does force you to look at how much time you're spending on certain things, and because I think we try to defend ourselves. We're like, oh, "Oh, I really don't spend that much time doing that. Or, you know, I only spent an hour on Pinterest. Yeah, yeah. That's what it shows you that. And then the hour turns, oh, it was actually five. How do you you not get that report? You have an iPhone, don't you? I do have an iPhone. (laughs) I don't know. Why am I so not, I'm not savvy. We're going to turn that on and we're going to compare screen time. We're not going (laughs) to, we're not going to compare it. Nope. (laughs) It's going to be like 17 hours on TikTok. What I say is (laughs) What would you tell somebody who's thinking about Live Better You? Oh, that's a good that, one. That uh, maybe's not, you know, they they just like, I'm thinking about it, but I haven't committed. Mm-hmm. What would be your advice for them? Sure. Yeah. Um, well, first thing I would say is go in there and sign up um, just so you can take a look at everything that's available. Um, because you know what? Full-time college or attending college classes isn't for everyone. That might not be what someone's looking for. We offer so many different courses, whether it is a skilled trade or if it's um, those professional certificates that we're looking for. We even have our health and wellness um, that you can go through. So um, it's really about going in there, signing up. And, you know, there's a short survey in the beginning that will help introduce you or ask you questions about, you know, what interests you. Um, you know, if you were thinking about one area, which one, you know, would you pick? And that helps narrow down your search a little bit more. Then the next step would be um, after you've signed up, they'll assign you a guild coach Mm. through Live Better You, which some people, I know I was kind of like that at first. I was like, I don't know if I want somebody calling me and like, you know, (laughs) accountability (laughs) about (laughs) signing up for school. Like I'm not quite there yet, but The nice thing is, is that they're so good at their jobs. Um, they're not pushy at all about signing up. Um, they're there to answer any questions that you have. Honestly, it probably took me like a good two solid months once I was like really interested to still sign up because I, I had my doubts about myself and my commitment. So I was like, I don't know if this mm-hmm. is something I, I really can mm-hmm. do, but you can do it. And um, it's just helping people take those steps to get there. So I would say first thing to, to do is go into Live Better You and sign up just so you can see what's available to you. And just keep reading and researching. You don't have to sign up for classes that day. You can just go in there and keep reviewing it. Um, you have access to the guild coaches. They can take you through any of those steps, answer any of your questions even help provide guidance if you're not entirely sure which direction to start with. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Um, Cool. Last question. Um, Mm -hmm. Any last advice uh, that you would have for associates that may be listening to this um, that are either, maybe they joined Walmart just for a job, (laughs) uh, like everybody else we talked to, uh, and they're maybe considering a career, 
mm-hmm. what advice would you give them? I would tell them that Walmart is your one-stop shop. <laughs> mm. We have everything here. And, um, you know, some people get lost in the thought of they, they look at their store and they think that's all there is. And I'm like, no, there is a world of Walmart available. Um, you know, if you think about it, I used to tell people all the time, you can be anything you want at Walmart, um, except we don't have doctors, veterinarians, or astronauts. Well, I had to take two of those off our list, and I'm down to astronauts. But who knows? Yeah, um, <laughs> that's that's in Alexis's. Uh, that's in her career path. She yeah. likes space. Yep, I do. Yeah, there you go. So I would just tell people that um, you can find it here, and you have an entire support group behind you that will help you every step of the way. Um, so you don't have to leave to, to figure out what you want to do. You can do that here. And you can have a great paying job, so why not? There you go. That's, <laughs> That's <awesome>. fantastic. <laughs> yeah, we should just, we're just going to have you on ads. Yeah, we're going to put that yeah. in the recruiting site. That's right. Yep. Um, Everybody talk to Good Katie. stuff, Katie. <laughs> um, Katie, uh, thank you so much uh, for your time. This has been uh, this has been the best. I've uh, really enjoyed it. People like you is what makes this company um, continue to be able to serve customers. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love to hear your story. I've started with a job. Now you have a career, uh, and you're helping now. You're helping other people find their careers and uh, and their purpose. And that is just uh, phenomenal. So thank you so much um, for the energy that you bring to your job every day. I noticed that as soon as we met yep. in the store. Uh, and that truly, <laughs> that truly makes a difference. Uh, so thanks you for everything that you're doing and hopefully Thank we'll you. see each other soon. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Thank right. you. Yep, thanks. Bye. Thanks Katie. Bye.